All right, so today's video is about solving for knee pain. But before I solve some knee pain, I need to turn on my lights. So, solving for knee pain. So, I want to tell you my approach and teach you kind of how I go about helping clients solve knee problems and how I solve my own knee problems when I have issues. A lot of what has that occurs when it comes to squatting, particularly with squats, that causes knee problems has a lot to do with dysfunction and asymmetrical loading of the body. So if you squat heavy or you squat at all, or you run even if you walk, you're going to have asymmetrical loading sometimes. And sometimes you'll have just too much asymmetrical loading where one side is getting more loaded than the other. And it's quite normal for your body to have a little bit of asymmetry, you know, right-handed, left-handed. But there's a point where when it becomes too much, it becomes an issue. So this kind of leads me into kind of a topic or a story about a client that I, I trained today, a new client, and she has some knee issues. And I did an overhead squat test with her to see how her body moved. And I wanted to see if I can help her with her knee problem. So I kind of want to show you what I saw. I'll use my body as an example, my feet here. And I had her squat with her shoes off just to see how she looked like when she squatted. And what she did when she squatted is the first thing I noticed her feet turned out a lot. Now, it's okay to have a little bit of feet turn out, even this. I mean, some people who do NASM uh, overhead squat tests and stuff, they'll think that this is feet turned out, and it probably is under most circumstances. But in, in the realm of normal world, this is actually not that bad, as long as they're able to maintain good knee control. But her feet were like this, and then when she squatted, she can get pretty low, because she can open up the hip really good and she can get low. But the problem was that with the left side, she was getting too much knee adduction of the knee. So her knee was kind of caving in. Not a lot, but a little bit. But she got low into a squat. So kind of what I look for when I see people squat is I will look to see how their knee goes over their instep. So even if it's a lunge, for example, like say this, so basically a lunge is a one-sided squat. My knee is over my instep. That's what I want to see. And then under load, if it starts to go in or it kind of stays in, that's good, that's a problem or can be a problem. And when she was squatting, I saw that when she was squatting, that this side was more in than the other. And I had her do like three sets of ten, kind of from all different directions. If you're familiar with the NASM overhead squat test, is kind of what you do. Anyways, so that told me that her left hip was not functioning well. And that her left quad was doing too much work. That's sort of the reason why knees go in in the first place. At least is my theory anyway. Um, is that when you are... When you get to the bottom of a squat and you have a lot of weight, one of the reasons why your knees will cave in is because you want to get more speed out of the, the bottom from your quads and more strength. And that's sort of kind of what I've noticed. And that's sort of the reason why Olympic lifters can, uh, like high level Olympic lifters, can get, well, they get away with it. It's actually normal human function. Your knee should be able to go in. The problem is that if it happens too often or it happens in an incorrect loading pattern, you're going to have issues. So, other things that I saw. Where are her, well, I did a single leg test and that showed me that there was a lot of instability there as well. And I'm going to show you that. But what I did first before that was I had her stretch. And let me show you what I had her do. And kind of what I do, if you'll see me do these in some of my videos, and Kelly Starrett talks about this, this stretch, so I got from him, is holding external rotation at the hip. And the reason why, so you can get basically stretching this hamstring and this piriformis. And that way you're essentially biasing more of knee external rotation to allow for better, this is flexion. And external rotation and you want that so that when you get to the bottom of a squat you have really good control that's sort of the idea what you're trying to get when you squat you want to get good external rotation you want to get good torque and the other thing too with the feet is that when your feet are straight and you create you can create more torque so if they're, if they're just fairly straight if they're straight I can create torque and you, you'll notice something as I kind of squat down here at the bottom what do you notice about my arches on my feet they essentially become more pronounced Essentially, there's more space right here. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create more space under my feet. That's more stability. When you don't have stability in the feet, uh, what will happen is your body has to artificially create it in a different way. And in that case, if you can't create an arch, your body will find an arch like this. This is not an arch, but this is kind of what your body does because it doesn't have an arch. It has to find stability, and it searches for it. Kelly Starrett talks about this. Your body is finding stability. But this is the best position if you can maintain it because it allows for more torque at the hip. But you can see how my heels begin to rise. There's dysfunction there, but this is where I'll get more torque. This is kind of why Olympic weightlifting shoes help a lot in the squat because they allow for your 
essentially extra range or extra dorsiflexion. In case you don't know or don't remember, dorsiflexion is basically the toes going up towards the knee. So what I try to do solving for knee, knee problems is to help figure out stability issues in the hip and the knee. And what that is is simply strengthening the glute. And when I had her do some step ups, this is sort of what I noticed. I noticed kind of the door jam effect. Uh, Kelly Storrett talks about, oh, he doesn't really call it door jam effect, but that's what I call it. She stepped up, this happened on the left side, but she stepped up and then she locked out, come back, come back up. Essentially, she had trouble stabilizing at the top of the movement. She would come up to extension of the knee, and then what would happen is she basically lock out. And then, she, and then in order for her to get a lockout, she has to kind of abruptly, basically she could not control that position. She could not do that. Or she could after some coaching. And that tells me there's a lot of weakness in the hip. Because one of the reasons that happens is that the hip is not able to stabilize the knee. Because that's essentially where everything is. Your engine, the big engine is the hip. And when your hip does not do its job, other parts of the system have to take slack. In that case, the knee and sometimes the ankle, depending on what you're doing. That's sort of why knee and ankle problems occur because of uh, not having strong enough hips. And it's not just necessarily strong enough hip. It's not having enough proper function in the hip. And that's kind of where the key thing is, knowing how to get function out of your hip. So that external rotation stretch is something that I do. Uh, also, with foam rolling the inner thigh, using foam roller, the roll of the inner thigh will help. Uh, I'll just show you here on my rumble roller. I'll just use this a second since I just dropped that. Just rolling here on the ground. And what that will do is will help break up the tissue of the inner thigh. And I had her do this and it made a difference. It made it easier for her to move. So internally rotate the knee a little bit, get the, the, uh, the adductor magnus, the, oh, that stuff is real tender for me even. And what that does, it allows for better external rotation with the hip. And that's kind of what you're trying to create when you're trying to minimize knee pain. So if you have acute knee pain and it hurts now, you're sort of too late. Because the thing is, is like when I say door jam effect, what's happening is that the knee is uh, locking out, you know. And what it's doing is basically holding onto a wall. If you're balancing on one leg as an example and you have to hold something, that's sort of what's happening in that position. The reason why that knee locks out or why the problem of the knee is happening is because... When you come up, or when she comes up, she has no stability or enough strength. And so what happens is she wants to hold on to the tissues. She wants to lock on. She wants to use the femur and the, the tibia and fibula to just basically sit on there and then come back. So that way she can find stability. That's the reason why lockout is typically the strongest position when you're holding because there's the most leverage. Your uh, bones are structurally holding your position. And what that does, it allows you to become, it allows you to stay stable. So in order for you to solve these problems, you've got to strengthen the hips. And I can, I'll go into more detail in other videos. This is the second video I've made. Uh, if you're watching this, you'll just get more ideas on knee pain. Essentially, they're two of the same video. I just wasn't happy with either of them. And I'm still not happy with this. But I'm going to post it anyway because if you do like watching my videos, you may get something out of it. And if you have a comment, place a comment below. Thanks for watching.